If you resent working or studying, this means that you are very privileged. Many humans are never taught how to think about work. As a teacher who has had hordes of students get off a bus, walk into the gym, and have the audacity to stare me down, even daring me to perform like a monkey in front of them, I do not care to be like the average person, and neither should you. I've only ever seen a handful of students who walked in already having the courage to fail, to go through being a novice. Some of them were five. If you want to actually be somebody in this world, you have to realize perhaps the most important thing I've come to realize as a student, as a teacher, and as an entrepreneur. The act of working, figuring out what you're doing, gives you skills in the short term that most people are too blind to see. My name is Matt. I studied the sciences in college, acting to overcome some serious speech issues, and applied my obsession with how the brain learns to building programs that teach people that they can be awesome. Like YouTube, it has been difficult, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. And you shouldn't learn how to try hard to where you have feedback loops that give you something in the meantime as you're pushing towards a further away goal. To help you out, something profound I learned when I was out of college building one program was my teacher who people in Hollywood dubbed the tricking professor said to me, if a student fails to learn, it's your fault no matter what. Which set a blazing fire under my butt, and he also mentioned, People don't care at first. That's why we're here. What I found is I had to get really good at getting people addicted to learning. Not by doing cheap games or giving out candy to make it fun, but by being honest and making it so rewarding that that's the only thing they wanted to do. Allow me to explain. At one point, I noticed I had these students who showed up every week ecstatic. A 21-year-old client who couldn't wait for the lesson that he would be parked outside the gym for 45 minutes minutes before his private session. Even parents who told me that their daughter or son had talked about going to class all week long. I realized the thing I had done so well for these individuals, who would run out the clock drenched in sweat, is they learned that every action towards a goal got them a reward that they didn't know was there. A little hit of dopamine would occur, and this is how I would start a reward loop in people that oriented them towards doing more work. This this was different than, say, the first person I ever had to fire, who was a 20-year-old that is perhaps the most opinionated and lazy person I've currently ever had to deal with. The gym hired him as a warm body, he treated everyone horribly, hated working more than most anyone I've ever met, and would hide in the corner glaring at everyone instead of doing anything. In real life, most people just want to beat the final boss, and are peeved when they have to to go to villages or do any quests along the way. They aren't stupid, they just literally don't know how to play the game. They cannot see that they have a level meter above their head at all times that goes up from 1 to 2 and so on whenever they do something. Even worse is in the beginning people tend to resist working and thereby work so painfully slow that they can't tell that the level meter is moving at all. I believe most people are far more capable than they realize. Even one 18-year-old who told me to F off, quit after saying steps are stupid, went home and against what I said, had a seizure trying to muscle a backflip in his bedroom. I'm telling you from so many amazing clients I have seen, the ones who learn to see how their level meter was increasing each day have a crushing advantage. Because these people begin to work so hard that they level up so much faster than everyone else else, regardless of their IQ. When I say, love working, I'll tell you what I said to one girl who had been making some fantastic progress, that it's a different sort of love than sitting down and eating ice cream. It is physical and mental effort, it expends you, yet because you can actually see all the ways you're improving, it fills you. Fulfillment is different than happiness. For many of you out there, aren't you curious about your upper limit? How far you can really go at whatever thing you want to do that is 
bouncing around in your head? I certainly have been. And as you probably know by now, there is no magic, no mysticism. Everything comes down to behavior, to skills. That is all you have when you get out into the world. That is true power that no one can take away from you. When I say education or work, I don't mean just sitting down and memorizing books that you forget after the test is done. I mean what skill sets are you after that you can tell and show people you have. Your value comes from stacking skill sets. Like me stacking the sciences, communication on top of training complex movements or acrobatics to give me a teaching advantage that has gotten me through doors, lessons with higher end coaches who don't accept new clients because they could see that I cared and I could talk about my experiences with them to prove it. The world has changed from what it was when our parents were our age. Things are accelerating. A degree now proves you can work, but its link to well-paying jobs has gone down. Cost of living has increased dramatically and wages have not kept up. The gap between the rich and the poor is widening and alternative education like you're listening to now has been on the rise because expensive modern education has begun to fell so many of us. And this hit me hard. For all my work in college, I first went on the path of a regular 9 to 5 for a year and a half, working for an ophthalmology company in Colorado, and I was treated to the worst verbal abuse I have ever received on a recurring daily basis that finally saw an outside company come in to make some dramatic changes and even some firings. Thankfully though, I had other skills that combined allowed me to get out from working as fodder and begin to carve out a different path. You might as well struggle at something that builds you than something that breaks you. My heart to heart with you, wherever you are right now and whatever you may be facing, is no matter where you find yourself, just give whatever you're learning your all. If it's just a quick teaching gig, a class you want to take, take every skill you can ask for before you go. Coaches who worked with me before going to college or getting a different job, I would tell some of them why not get great at teaching, at gymnastics, at parkour, at understanding how learning works while you're here. Grab those skills while you still can and see how those affect your stack. Some of them listened and some of them just didn't care. Stacking different skills makes you valuable. It's what lets you avoid being fodder for abusive people. And as hard as it is, it's typically a lot more interesting. Now what I'm going to tell you is controversial to the advice you may be getting elsewhere. It's okay, actually necessary to be out of balance for a bit. If you have something that you want to do, or I would say just a general direction you want to head in, do that as much as you can. Everything else. All of these consumers and products, streaming, going out at least once in the week, buying fast food, buying new clothes, why don't you have a house with a white picket fence, a nice car, all of these expectations that are being thrown at you that were part of the traditional path that are now so much more difficult for the new generations to come by will slow you down. They will eat up your time and the money you could be using to gain skills that will change the trajectory of your life. Laziness is a privilege. If you're in survival mode, you must learn to revel in the skills you're gaining, not spending a lot of money on stuff that for some messed up reason people think you need to so they can see that you've made it. We want to look at balance across your lifetime, not a week by week basis. You can party later. Now is the time to gain skills that make you one awesome human being. If like me, you start noticing all the ways you're leveling up different stats you have, you may actually find it so much more fun than playing video games and watching shows that have actually become boring because work is now more rewarding for you and your brain. Give yourself all the little awareness rewards as to all the ways that you're improving. This also causes us to almost romanticize the process. This is my way of saying that people get really into pushing the boulder up the hill, knowing that each step is a permanent upgrade to their character. 
What's really cool is that nearly all of you are already masters at doing this. Say if you're playing a video game like The Legend of Zelda, where like me, you pull an all-nighter, end up running through the woods, a blood moon comes out, you nearly die because you currently suck at playing the game, jump off a mountain, and blindly glide your way through a thunderstorm into a beachside village that you had no idea was there. Have you ever had a crazy experience playing a game? Instead of cursing ourselves for the fact that we hadn't already beaten the game and being stressed about it, every second of getting better and discovering new things was incredible. But yet we struggle to do this in our own lives. We place enormous pressure on ourselves to be incredible right now and forgo the journey of getting better, of playing the game. I don't struggle with this for learning tricks I teach anymore, but I certainly struggle with it for YouTube. It's okay to fail. In fact, there's way too many ways to fail that it's practically impossible for anyone to stumble upon the correct answer to win the first time. And you just instantly beat the game. And wouldn't that be boring? Here's not so much a twist, but one massive skill I learned and applied to everything I do that I wish I did so much sooner. The best way to fail and learn as much as you can about the game you're playing is to do as much volume as you possibly can. But there is a catch to this. Up until now, even for clients, I've always been so meticulous in my approach that I put so much weight in every repetition I do of anything. Still be thoughtful, but I cannot stress in this video that increasing, and I mean by tenfold, the amount of how much you do something in a given period has served to move the boulder up the hill so much faster. However, they have to be improving repetitions because if you fail to notice how you're progressing, you can quickly become stranded. Which is why I made a whole video about the impact on your brain that thoughtful improving repetitions have versus mindless repetitions that I notice keep even the most determined people trapped. 